Hello and welcome to a quick demonstration and run through of the ArcSight Logger 6.1 release uh, and a quick demonstration of its capabilities. Uh, there are a few updates and changes to what it looks like, what it does with regards to the GUI and some of the functions of what it provides. So it's just a very quick update and uh, run through of its capabilities so you can see that. So uh, I just logged into the system and we can see that, well, we've got animated graphs. Um, it doesn't make a massive difference from that, but the important thing is we've refreshed the way that some of the graphics work uh, and how it's displayed so we can see there's much better consistency in the way that some of the, the data is viewed. It's much more interactive. So as I move over the particular items, I can see that it highlights automatically. Of course, there's a drill down to that, which I'll demonstrate in a second. Uh, and of course, then it's breaking down the numbers and displaying them correctly. So in fact, actually, if if I look at my, my summary view, uh, it will actually calculate and do the numbers uh, in a much more transparent or right way for, for the calculations. So we can see, for example, it's it's uh, shortening the numbers to make them much easier and more visible within uh, the overall view. And like I say, of course, it, it then becomes very simple for me to just click and drill down through that data. So, uh, for example, let me just jump back to a dashboard for a second. And what I can do is I can uh, look at a particular port number. So I'm interested in uh, 821. That's uh, a disproportionate amount of NetFlow uh, records for that particular port. So what I can do is I can just highlight it. It gives me the percentage as well. So I can see 27%. And then I can just click and it drills down through that, initiates a search and gives me the view of the data accordingly. So there's no, no massive difference in the functionality at that point. But you can see that it becomes much easier and much more powerful to use that, uh, that functionality. You can see that we've also refreshed the way that some of the searching is working uh, it's much quicker and much slicker as part of that and I'll just flag up a very small point here we've changed the way that some of this data is viewed as well so you'll be aware that uh, the interface no longer requires any form of flash to be installed as flash is now being deprecated across browsers as a whole um, what I will do is I'll, I'll just run through some quick examples of, of some scenarios of how we could do some searching and how we do some graphics and, and dashboarding view within logger itself so we see that we, we did a, a click through there, but you know what what is the data we're looking at? So I can just do a, an open empty search if I wanted to. So we're actually just searching back through the last 15 minutes worth of data. We can see there's a huge amount of information in there, which is which is useful, I'm sure, but I don't really understand what I'm looking at. So what do I want to start with? Well, normally I have some sort of information I want to start with. So you know, for example, I I, I want to look for admin. You know, I want to look for admin users and I can do a quick search and I can see that I'm getting the data extremely quickly where the search is vastly improved on performance and search. What I can also see is I'm getting a mixture of lots of data uh, and I'm viewing that data and admin, some of its windows, some of its different systems. So let's start narrowing things down a little bit. So administrator. So I'm just interested in the Windows administrator logs. So I just do a quick search on that. And I can get all this data. So I'm seeing some Windows logs. I'm seeing, oh, I'm seeing some other logs as well. Oh, okay. So now actually I'm, I'm starting to realize that there is, I can't just do a simple search because I'm going to get hits on lots of data. In fact, here I can see that uh, my IIS data is actually showing me that uh, my default administrative account exists. Oh, hang on a minute. So um, it's actually doing a search in every field. So I probably want to be a bit more specific. I don't really want to be writing any regex for doing searching through fields and what I just want to pull that data out. I want to make it really, really simple. So uh, I'm just looking for certain Windows logs. And I can see I've got some Windows logs around here, some Microsoft Windows here. In fact, actually, it's pre-populated a search fields for me. So I could look at uh, my, my vendor here, and I can see there's a whole list here. But I can just see the Microsoft, which is a mix up 8% of the logs that I searched here. So I could just click Microsoft and actually it's put in that field based search for me. So it says I'm looking for Windows uh, Microsoft logs uh, and I'm looking for uh, a, the administrative user that's in that. So suddenly I'm getting a lot more in interesting information. I'm just focusing it around Microsoft. And of course, I I'm getting a couple of pages of data. I'm getting 28 events in the last 15 minutes. Wouldn't it be really useful to, to, to view some of this data into a chart? And let's throw it in there and, and do some things and, and be quite clever around that. Well, actually, let me just take a step back. What about just having uh, understanding what the users are doing on my Microsoft system? So why don't I just take that, that bit of search out there? Let's jump back. And I'm just looking at Microsoft logs here for a second. But I'm going to get in all sorts of data and information. Wouldn't it be really useful to, to start limiting this down and make sure I get some valid, valid data here as well? So uh, let's put a condition in there. And... Um, 
source. In fact, actually, again, what the system will do is it'll search ahead and, and give me some suggestions of fields and searches I can do. User name is not. No, it's an operator I can do, so it's not a blank field. OK, so I'm looking for Microsoft logs that don't that have some field in the source username. So I'm getting all sorts of data here. This is really quite useful and interesting. Mm. But again, I'm getting I'm getting pages and pages of data here because it's a, an open ended search and I'm hit, getting thousands of events that's useful. But I probably want to start limiting this down or I could put it in a dashboard or a chart. Well, let's put it in a chart. Let's put that into a simple top, uh, which is the top 10. You can actually make it top 10, top 20, whatever you want to do. But by default, it's 10. Uh, and let's do it by, uh, I don't know, um, the name of the event. The name of the event field is name. So do the top 10 events by name with Microsoft events. Oh, OK, suddenly I'm starting to see there's some valid data here with regards to what's going on uh, and some information that we can see that's based on it as well. And I can see there's lots of data here and so on. Oh, oh OK, this is quite clever. Well, could I put that in a dashboard? Yeah, I could actually. What I can do is I can just quickly save that. It brings up a little dialog. I want to put it in a panel. And I'm going to do this as uh, the panel name is going to be Windows Events. Um, it's a new search. I'm going to call it Windows Event Search. I'm going to put it into a new dashboard. I'm going to call this my, uh, let's give it a new name, New Windows. Uh, I want to put it into a chart column, and it's top 10. I'm interested in top 10 there. I'm going to save that. And there we go. I've just saved that as a panel in my new dashboard. Um, so what I can do is I can just quickly go to my dashboard view. I can click my drop down and I can see there's lots of information. There's my, there's my new windows. So I click the new one and there it is. There's my there's my search panel. I've got to wait for it to load because it's a new search and it's just running and caching the data for me. And hey, presto, there's my, my, my panel for me. And actually what I'm really interested in is I want to be able to look at this uh, login, for example, and I can add I can just click, but because it's in a dashboard, it automatically knows how to build that search for me. So it's actually doing that and it's built it and I can drill down and do that search. It then becomes incredibly powerful for me to do that as well. But that's just a top dashboard. What I could also do is I can do something else. Well, what I could do is let's look at uh, administrator activity. So I just put in the username being administrator. So now we're getting down to 25, 28 events here, actually. Uh, we can see a mixture of things. So what I could quickly do is let's just put that into a chart uh, and I can just do, uh, uh, do it as, for example, account by, uh, let's do it by name. And uh, what we're going to do on there is have the fields themselves. So we'll do source address and then destination address. Hey presto, I run that and now see the combinations of source and destination based on the type, the actual name of the, the event. Like I say, th does it, what I can do is very quickly create those charts and view those charts and see the data. And of course, what I can now do is just, I can save that. Uh, I can put it as a dashboard panel. So do that um, admin access. Uh, I can put that into my existing dashboard, which was the uh, new Windows one. Uh, I want to make it, in fact, I want to make this a pie chart because I can uh, and save that. Oh, sorry, I need to give it the name. Uh, the save search is admin access search click save what I can now do is I go back to my dashboards uh, I can see my dashboard my uh, new windows dashboard there and hey presto I have two panels I can now drag and drop and move them around and, and there's my information I put it into a into a pie chart and I can see the data and the searches and the drill downs from those are automatically created it becomes an incredibly powerful way of doing things um, just very quickly what I can do is uh, show that we've got some new monitor capabilities around the platform itself uh, this was common feedback that we had so we've added in additional capability to to view these more interesting interactive views of uh, what, we're what we're seeing as the, the operation of the system itself. Uh, these are interactive. We can change those dynamically and view the data. Uh, that's exactly what uh, customers have asked for, so we've added that in. Um, expect us to add in more functionality around this to understand what the platform is doing and, and how we're doing things. So we can see how the data is being received, the EPS rates, the storage volumes, and so on. And all this is being constantly updated data as well. We can do uh, reports as well. 
uh, we can see what's going on with those reports. Uh, the reports are a slightly different way of doing things. They're a much more sophisticated way of creating a view into the data. So you can see that here in that, uh, for example, here we've got a, a, a report here. It's a focused uh, view, and then it's got the actual data that supports underneath. So it's a lot more sophisticated way of doing the reporting. Uh, this is a pre-canned one that we had for a SANS top five. There's a, a relevant one here for top uh, bandwidth by source. Uh, and what I can do is I can just, you know, for example, very quickly give a, a quick illustration of some of the reports that we have available. So I can see here I've got some demo reports. I actually know I've got this failed log on by user. So I need to quickly run that search. We have the capability of limiting it down to certain devices that we want to do on certain storage groups, i.e. retention, and even down to the device groups, how we want to break it down. But I'm actually just running this in the last two hours of the data. Let's run the data. Let's run that search and, and view that. So it's actually running through the search there very quickly to produce the report. We can see the report here. It's actually going to render the graphics in a second. What's actually done is it's created 31 pages. That's a lot. This is an incredible amount of data that we put into that system as well. To, to create this this report. So we can see that uh, there's all this data. We can see that the by username failed logins, this test user is quite extensive and created a lot. Uh, we can actually go through the multiple pages of the actual detail that supports this as well. Uh, and, and we can also even then, if we wanted to, even export this data as PDF or as an Excel or a CSV and actually do further analysis and, and search on it. You can see what it's actually done is it's pulled all the data out by destination, uh, where it's come from, uh, where it's going to, the username, and the count as well. So it's actually calculated all that. And it's run that report extremely quickly over the last few hours. So it gives an illustration of some of the capabilities there. But of course, you, you know, there are going to be pre-canned reports, but there are abilities to create other reports as well. Um, and of course, the the, the we made this uh, significantly easier. There is no reporting language to learn. You can create the reports. You can customize the existing reports. You can even write SQL queries to do that as well. But what we've actually provided is a, as a, a mechanism of using this uh, visual editor. So what we can do is we can we can create all these, and what we can do is you can drag and drop capabilities onto this. But just to note as well, we've actually extended the, the functionality of what we've provided within, within Logger so that, for example, when we talk about a data source, we can actually query out to external systems. We can union that data with uh, additional uh, capabilities and functions as well uh, around that. So it's a very simple mechanism. We can even run external tasks. So again, if I just drag and drop this external task, just to give an illustration, uh, we can even do some extra uh, big data queries as part of that as well. So. Um, you don't actually have to write uh, a, a specific SQL. Uh, you can create it, you can create the filters, you can create your your, uh, your joins within the data to produce all that. And it's all drop down elements as well with regards to the fields and the criteria and so on. So it becomes a very simple way of, of, of building those, those uh, reports and dashboards for the more sophisticated reports beyond those that are provided within the simple dashboard functionality that I just talked about earlier. Uh, that's a very, very quick run through of some of the changes uh, with regards regards to the Logger 6.1 and some of the changes around the interfaces, how we would look to do some very simple searching and dashboarding and how we can display that information in a dashboard as well. Uh, I gave a very quick demonstration of, of viewing some uh, and actually doing a search and, and, and why we need to understand what the fields are so we can actually process that data correctly uh, and then put that into a dashboard very simply. I just showed and clicked and saved and there we do. We have two elements to our dashboard already uh, and then becomes very simple. What I haven't even mentioned, of course, is we can customize that. We can even export that data as well, and it's all drilled down and interactive too. And if we want to do more data, we can jump to our report capability and produce those really focused reports with, with the data in with regards to further investigation if we want to do that. So with that, that's a very quick and uh, fast run through of the, some of the features and functionality that's been added uh, and updated as part of Logger 6.1. Thank you very much for your time.